Well, we are live now to the last panel of the day and in fact of Taekwon 2021. Now on this panel, we've had a couple of very interesting conversations going on backstage, which we are now going to bring to you to the front stage. The start of anything big is always a small speed. In fact, all the wonderful things in the world emerge from an idea. An idea is nothing but a seed. We ought to remember this even more because our roots, India's roots, and particularly Punjab's ethos and roots are all based on agriculture. We've always been an agrarian economy, right? Now, what happens when roots and traditions meet technology and innovations of today? I'm sure something wonderful happens. And we're about to find out through this panel on Agritech, the new decade of smart agriculture. Now, the first guest of this panel, we have with us Mr. Rajiv Sivaj, who's the Chief General Manager of Nabad Punjab. And Nabad is an organization we've all heard about, studied about since our school days. So technically, the organization needs no introduction at all and the wonderful work that it is doing in the field of agriculture and rural development. Uh, next up, we have with us Mr. Pratip Vasu, who's the co-founder and CEO of SatShore, a startup which is based on connecting space data with agriculture financing and insurance needs. That's going to be very interesting there, so stay tuned. And we also have with us Mr. Arun Naryal, who's the director of HydroCorps India Private Limited, a company which is primarily into hydroponics. And we also have with us Mr. Gaurav Sharma, who's a technical expert from GIZ India. If I just may, GIZ is an agency of Germany's federal government, working on Germany and India's collaborative agreements and particularly focused right now on Punjab and its ecosystem. That's a diverse and wonderful panel here. And as our moderator, Mr. Sumer Walia, who's the director of SEED, which is the incubation center at Chitkara University, beautifully put it, it's like flying a plane and landing it safely. Mm. <laughs> Sorry, sir, I stole your line there, but uh, I will now uh, leave the panel up to you to take this discussion forward. Looking forward to it and uh, looking forward to learn lots more about how agriculture and technology can come together. Over to you. Thank you very much, Niharika. And very well said and beautifully, you know, you have opened the panel and uh, with your wonderfully woven words and setting the context to our conversation. Hope we do justice. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, so, uh, well, I, I, I would say gentlemen, so only because ladies are not here in the panel, but uh, hope they would have been, uh, we would have had some expert on that also, but uh, definitely we have stalwarts from uh, the field related to agri. We have a great deep-rooted institution, NABARD, which has been at the helm of affairs and the, you know, um, you, I would say research, financing, a lot of stuff on the agri part. We have uh, GIZ uh, being represented by Gaurav uh, for the state of Punjab. We have Pratip, who's, uh, you know, a very, uh, I would say, passionate entrepreneur in the field of space tech. And with over uh, seven countries, uh, he's got his footprints of his business. And uh, we have Arunji, who has, uh, you know, and expertise in setting up hydroponics uh, and hydroponic farm and very well from the state of Punjab. Uh, so, well, we know what is happening. We know uh, Punjab, uh, you know, uh, as one of the uh, most popular agrarian uh, state in the country. And uh, we know uh, how, uh, you know, agriculture is the backbone of the society in terms of, uh, you know, um, I would say providing food, everything in, in terms of our well-being, I would say. And how it has evolved and there is a great history to it and how the Mandi system, how the Green Revolution in 77, uh, you know, and uh, before that and how the rise of, uh, I would say, the financing, the, the financing institutes, the uh, I would say financing in from parts of Punjab, Gidarba, Barnala, you know, Batinda. So how a parallel economy also started in a way to support the agriculture. So a lot of transitions have happened. But our topic today is that, you know, how agri -tech, smart agri-tech is coming into shape and what are the changes we are experiencing. Like, for example, uh, we have conventional tractors, which we are using in our fields you know farmers use but now we have e-tractors trying to find their market so a lot of uh, disruption and innovation happening 
Uh, let me put this question uh, straight on to uh, Mr. Sivach. Uh, he's been there with Nabad for a very long time, and he has been very much having an industry interface. And let us have his very simple views on how he feels a decade before the scene was in Agri, and how is the decade now? What is the scene now? What's happening? What are his thoughts? Are there enough entrepreneurs coming in the field of agri tech? Yeah. Or Thank you, Sumit. Uh, yeah. So maybe yeah. Have, we have your views, and everybody else, please feel free to comment, and yeah. we'll make it interesting and, you know, sort of uh, well meaning conversation. Uh, uh. Uh, my special thanks to Thai team for giving me this opportunity and thank you Sumit for giving this opportunity for making opening remarks. I'm uh, really honest that I'm uh, enthused to find young people uh, in the, as a panelist, co-panelist with me. That thank gives you. me a lot of pleasure. And uh, being an agriculture graduate, I have observed this sector for quite some long time. My entire education, my entire career has been in agriculture. And uh, recent years, it has lost its scene to some extent. The younger people don't want to join agriculture. The first choice is that to move out of agriculture. And that is what the farmer families are opting for. But recently we have some changes. Uh, educated people who are serving uh, abroad, IT people, they are coming back to their roots and they want to serve uh, the agriculture sector with IT enabled services and various value added services. Right. So there is a scope for a new kind of uh, technology and uh, when we talk of technology, generally we have a, uh, you know, limited option that there'll be some kind of uh, greenhouse, some kind of precision farming will be there and some um, drone will be there sp spraying some pesticide. Uh, we have that kind of vision, but we should not restrict technology only to farm level, uh, farm gate level. Uh, rather, uh, the expansion of technology should be beyond farm, whether it is post harvest, whether it is supply chain, whether it's, it's a production of seeds, whether uh, it is uh, giving, you know, genetically modified seeds uh, and whether uh, it is processing, agro-processing. So the entire gamut uh, of agriculture needs to, you know, build on a technology platform so that uh, farmers are really benefited. And uh, as you are aware that uh, recently the agriculture sector, particularly in green belt area, is facing a lot of challenges. Farmers are on road. And uh, they are feeling insecure that if present set of, uh, you know, practices uh, that is wheat and paddy production, where they are comforted to the extent that they are getting minimum sport price, if that is disturbed, they will be left with uh, no options. So they feel very insecure. Okay. This, this scenario can be changed gradually and uh, based on some incentive, farmers can be motivated to, you know, move on to the uh, value-added crop, high-value crops. So these are my initial remarks and uh, perfect. I, I think uh, that's very well said. I'll pick up one of your comments that why youth is not much getting into agriculture. Yeah. And I'll request Gaurav to come in and uh, comment because uh, they uh, have done a lot of paid work and before they set up GIZ operations with the Punjab government and, and setting up an independent uh, array of uh, things in the, you know, in, in the state of Punjab. Uh, Gaurav, what are your thoughts? What do you think on a personal opinion uh, which you can share that why mo not much of youth is coming into agriculture per se, the conventional agriculture? You know, I understand entrepreneurs are jumping into development, development of technology for agriculture and its operations, maintenance and all that stuff. But what are your thoughts why youth is not coming? And then I will request Pratip also to give the you know, answer to this question. Gaurav, over to you. So Ali, I'll have to request you to repeat the question because there was a uh, network no glitch problem, at my No end. problem. Uh, Mr. Sivach uh, from Navard mentioned that, you know, that uh, it's a sign of worry that the youth is not adapting to conventional agriculture, you know, uh, as, as their practice right. and as their profession. And yes, he also has given a hope that technology do is coming, but it can have a wider, you know, impact. Uh, not only related to uh, limited to agriculture. Let uh, my question to you is, uh, you know, why do you think, or if you think, and what do you think on why youth is not enough, uh, you know, uh, motivated to come into agriculture with open heart and with passion? Uh, can you hear me, Gaurav? 
or maybe we can request prateep to answer gaurav can jump in prateep yeah sure um, so i am i am probably uh, not the right person to answer this because uh, i personally have been always in the technology space and uh, my my experience with agriculture has been uh, only through the work of our company and what uh, we find is that uh, the overall uh, uh, aspect of how you look at agriculture it's not like a small business it's not it's seen uh, m- more from the perspective of culture your family tradition and uh, you know uh, it's it's something which we uh, we need to keep doing uh, not just for making money it's, it's main, meant for making you know uh, feeding yourself so right. uh, that that you tu- retuning of uh, how to make agriculture profitable how every farmer is an entrepreneur that that change is slowly coming i won't say it's not there it's it's uh, i have probably uh, spent a lot of my time uh, in the southern states uh, andhra pradesh telangana karnataka and we see so many uh, young guys who are coming back from their it jobs sometimes from uh, you know abroad and were starting a uh, very high value uh, crops business like for example we see uh, in in karnataka uh, you know cooperatives being formed for arakka nut plantations we see in telangana uh, you know palm uh, uh, palm oil uh, plantations being being put forward because they understand uh, these are the young guys who are understanding how to link to the forward and the backward linkage in the market and they are seeing agriculture as a business and uh, uh, but but again it would not be right to uh, comment on whether this is a consistent change across india or is it just in certain pockets of india because we are such a vast vast country i come uh, from uh, jharkhand which is very backward place and uh, i don't see any of these uh, things happening there so uh, i believe as a as a bottom line we need to we need to rebrand agriculture as a sector which is no which is a bunch of you know entrepreneurs uh, rather than uh, you know uh, people who are uh, seen as uh, uh, just working at the farm to feed the country and people right. working in the fields and all so there has to be a mindset shift also gorav please add what do you think what are your thoughts yeah i think uh, this entire agriculture ecosystem need to be revitalized with uh, you know there are a lot of entrepreneurship opportunities across the sub, uh, supply chain or uh, in the agriculture sector right. like uh, prateep mentioned uh, pre and post harvest management i also see the role of not only uh, ai or technology led startups or uh, interventions like uh, similar to uh, those which prateep uh, is undertaking i also see a good amount of uh, you know manufacturing facilities to be established to support either clusters of or agriculture clusters or a particular area or region right for example for example uh, we have been struggling a lot for quite some time over the paddy straw the management of residual uh, this paddy management uh, so a concrete solution in terms of uh, the the volume of such intervention is required or the uh, size of such intervention is quite still missing so right. bottom line i think i would like to conclude this particular statement with uh, that i think uh, the established entrepreneurs or the large scale industries in this sector can take forward this agenda and they can help and entrepreneurs become you know real entrepreneurs who are in the incubation stage or startup stage they can help them jointly or they can work jointly to right. revitalize the system no this is a very beautiful point you know industry stalwarts who are big real big and for them to you know mentor or create five to six startups each is nothing of not a big ball game right so that is something beautiful point you are you know leaving us with uh, with your statement and let me just before i go to uh, rajiv ji let me ask arun ji what are his thoughts because i really like the point pratip uh, mentioned that you know why agriculture is no longer much profitable and then we come on to rajiv ji later on for because he handles the finance part bit also arun ji what are your thoughts why the youth is not enough motivated to take agriculture as a profession you know and uh, there is some reluctancy you yeah, well, please unmute yes yes please all of uh, all of you 
and giving me a chance to uh, come here and share my views. Uh, Please be a little louder. Maybe up your volume, sir. Uh, is it okay now? Yeah, much better. Please go ahead. Okay. So, uh, as per uh, my opinion, uh, I was uh, uh, I am not basically from uh, agriculture family, uh, but uh, when I saw that it is it may be a good profitable business or in it, it, it is a good industry, then uh, we started uh, hydroponic. So. Uh, when we saw that the uh, already traditional markets mein jis tarike se kaam ho raha hai uh, aur agar hum usse kuch better aur kuch alag tarike se kaam karenge aur ek achhi quality uh, agar provide karenge to uh, it can be a good uh, profitable uh, thing so then uh, we started uh, in 2010 when we started it we saw that ki just for the जस्ट कह सकते हैं कि शौक के लिए हमने स्टार्ट किया था कि डोंट नो दैट कि इट विल कम लाइक दैट इस तरह इस तरीके से हम इस बड़े स्केल पे हम इसे करेंगे बट व्हेन वी स्टार्टेड इट देन इट वाज जस्ट अ बिगनिंग देन इन 2015 वी स्टार्टेड ग्रोइंग विद मेडिसिनल प्लांट्स बिफोर दैट वी आर जस्ट ग्रोइंग ओनली वेजिटेबल्स राइट जब हमने देखा कि वेजिटेबल्स में हमें हम क्योंकि तो पेरिशेबल्स हैं हमें मार्केट को उस तरीके से देखना पड़ेगा कि मार्केट जैसे ही हमारे प्रोडक्शन आती है साथ साथ तो प्लानिंग जब हमने देखा कि अगर हम इसको मेडिसिनल हर्ब्स की तरह तरफ अगर हम जाते हैं देन भी तब हम ज्यादा अच्छे तरीके से मार्केट को कैप्चर कर पाएंगे एज ए कमर्शली टर्म्स के हिसाब से देन वी स्टार्ट इन टू थाउजेंड विद मेडिसिनल प्लांट्स and uh, in 2018 uh, we started uh, uh, manufacturing of um, uh, ayurvedic medicines and uh, nutraceutical products so uh, okay so uh, you believe that you know your effort in the second part of uh, changing the track has yeah. yielded in better profits and all yeah right it is working out better yeah so uh, ये कह सकते हैं कि अगर किसी भी काम को अगर सही तरीके से किया जाए और थोड़ा सा उसमें एक जो टेक्नोलॉजी का सहारा लेके अगर अच्छे से किया जाए तो एवरी बिजनेस कैन उसका रिजल्ट आएगा ही आएगा यू नो अच्छा रिजल्ट आएगा नहीं ये बिल्कुल जिस दृढ़ता दृढ़ता से और जिस अनुशासन से मुझे लगता है आपने इसको बनाया है थिंग्स आर यू नो कमिंग इन योर फेवर एंड इट इज हेल्पिंग द सोसाइटी ऑल्सो एंड क्वालिटी स्टाफ इज कमिंग आउट इस पे वी विल डेफिनेटली कम बट लेट मी टॉक टू राजीव सर एंड राजीव जी ये बताइए कि दैट यू नो इज देयर इनफ फाइनेंस फॉर यू नो व्हिच कैन बी यू नो टर्नड इनटू अ स्केलेबल प्रोजेक्ट फॉर यंग एंटरप्रेन्योर्स एंड इफ यू कैन आल्सो कमेंट ऑन द प्रॉफिटेबिलिटी फॉर यंगस्टर्स यू नो कमिंग इनटू द फील्ड ऑफ एग्रीकल्चर इन टर्म्स ऑफ यंग स्टार्टअप्स एंड ऑल दैट स्टफ या uh that is a very pertinent question actually in today's uh, agriculture transformation uh when we talk of startup uh, we need to have some kind of incubation spot for them and uh, that ecosystem has just started uh, developing as you are uh, also hosting a incubation center recently i have visited punjab agriculture university ludhiana they have also set up a incubation center for food processing so likewise uh, this this uh, incubation uh, thing has gone uh, wide long and wide even right. abar has set up agri business incubation center at uh, seven places that include at uh, hisar it kharagpur and uh, tnau uh, madurai so uh, some of these are really giving good results so initially i mean we have to have some kind of incubation support for the startups and when it comes to you know financial support we need uh, venture venture funding so so that uh, some lazy investment is there and uh, who find right right kind of opportunity to support and uh, nabad has many subsidiaries uh, uh, that includes nab venture also where right. we have a alternate investment fund and who supports the start, startup in agriculture food rural business agriculture rural financial services at early to mid stage that is the age when you require fund this kind of funding and uh, we are focused on driving transformation in these industries by providing strategic and operational insights uh, patient capital and access to our extensive network and uh, we have uh, been successful in supporting some of the startup like uh, i'll give you some example uh, there is jack kisan a rural fintech startup 
उनतीस लूसन टेक ड्रिवन पॉपुलर प्रोड्यूस सेलिंग स्टार्टअप मीट ब्रांड टेंडर कट and the sanyukta analytics are few on the sort of where we have made funding so we need a special uh, arrangement for funding startup if you go to a bank and you expect them to fund a startup that may not be feasible so in, traditionally in india you know in business families uh, the, the, the uh, younger one in the family are always supported by the family with some initial capital right um, but when uh, the, when it come entrepreneur from the background which is not uh, from the business or from farming sector they don't have that kind of support so right. we need to develop more uh, uh, venture funding opportunity for the startups that is uh, my perfect opinion. i think your comment uh, is uh, focusing very much on the early uh, stage development of the idea under yeah. a very structured incubation which is also yeah. flexible very yes. good set of mentors and then comes the role of financial institutions banks and all to cushion them with some sort of grants and financial aid and then they should also realize the young startups that it is not the grants which make or build businesses it is the customers so you have to scale right yes. so you know so that uh, they can have the game of scale which is very critical we understand this entire transition and we also want that you know uh, the development of incubation centers in academic institutions or non academic institutions for example as you mentioned pau has an incubation center this is amazing uh, i was recently visiting ikrisat in hyderabad uh, yeah. which is um, you know amazingly set up uh, institute uh, in agri research and crop research and uh, they do combination crops and they do uh, season crops all that stuff then but i was impressed to see the incubation center they have built with 33 companies you know uh, you related to agri tech and all uh, so do we also see a uh, some sort of uh, obviously we have to take inspiration from somebody and uh, you know we also need to respect and admire if somebody is doing better than us so do we also miss uh, uh, you know uh, gorov something like an incubation center which has a respecting today's times demands the technology in place a whole set of wholesome development for a agriculture related startup do you do you think we need more incubation centers to support rajiv ji's uh, comment and what type of incubation centers uh, thank you uh, well recently we have conducted a stakeholder consultation which you are also a part of so yes. we came to know that there are around more than 2024 uh, startups in punjab uh, sorry incubation centers in punjab but Uh, since we are working with a couple of them uh, there are certain challenges which each of these incubation uh, centers yeah, let's, let's address is, those yeah yeah and feel free yeah. to comment other panelists please let's not make it a dull event uh, yes. please feel no, free the, to comment what are the challenges yes gorav please yeah the first one is for example for many of them uh, more than 50% they are uh, running low on their uh, you know funding part like you mentioned one in hyderabad you said it is being set up by 33 companies ikrisat and yeah. if i yeah and if i take uh, the reference from punjab barring a few most of them are individual incubators and they are still missing on uh, the connect they have with entrepreneurs because they don't have at this moment instruments which are of uh, you know mutual interest to msmes as well as incubation centers so like i said in the, in in my previous comment entrepreneurs need to you know they are required to come forward to support the first challenge is of course funding we have schemes from uh, government of india also but uh, uh, i mean i won't be able to comment on the 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 efficacy or the actual implementation of the same because of the various challenges at their end right. or the scrutiny which is required at their end uh, but we have other challenges related to the mentoring part you know uh, and then uh, on the technology part also because uh, we have not been a part of this transformation for example the incubation centers they have not been a part of the manufacturing transformation which has happened in india they need to now improve upon what is there already with them for example we have had uh, a couple of uh, startups agri related startups who required special purpose machine to convert the residue to a, a a usable product but 
because the entrepreneurs are not involved who work with machines on a daily basis or who innovate on a daily basis incubation centers themselves you know they are i would say quite uh, they are running quite low on uh, experts mentors and the required technical as well as fin support from uh, their uh, msme uh, partners or i would say stakeholders industry well i think yeah. that is very well said the kind of uh, you know growth we could have seen we and especially in an enterprising state like punjab is something which we feel that could be better and definitely that's the reason we all have come together to at least contribute our bit to the entire growth of this uh, culture well when you said about the incubation center and all i okay let's let's look at one challenge which is that the linkages between the incubation centers the uh, you know continuous access to problem statements the pool of problem statements maybe it could be laid down by departments and private bodies like tai and entrepreneurs they okay let's here is 100 problem statements and we invite entrepreneurs to come and give us solutions to this and here is nabard saying or bank saying here is the finance if you give us a solution and here is tai saying okay here is the mentoring setup and here is chitkara or somebody like chitkara says okay we give you an office space you have to be free because mental makeup of a young entrepreneur is very important he or she should be free mentally to you know exp- express his or her creativity that's very important so mr arun ji uh, please comment on uh, the uh, thought of on challenges and then we ask uh, prateep what are the challenges he thinks uh, he must have also gone through building such a sizable business yeah gorav please yeah i also want to highlight because uh, at couple of instances we had uh, tried to you know establish this linkage support or uh, linkage or networking you know uh, to revitalize or to vitalize this ecosystem through networking most of the times we have heard back from uh, the industry association presidents or uh, the executive members that what is there for us so i think uh, incubation centers uh, need to improve on their articulations of their value proposition right what do they offer to uh, msmes because initially if i call someone to sponsor or to you know uh, for the prize money also definitely he would ask what is there in return for me so that articulation needs to be reworked or to no, be I, you know I, comprehensively I, I put out no i think that's a very again a very valid point but uh, you know things are improving we were recently having a very good discussion with the punjab government and uh, department of science technology and entrepreneurship we were just talking with them and after the policy discussion and certain thoughts you know yesterday only we got a mail okay each innovator would lack rupees you know things are moving you know so we thought okay let's introduce that offering to our students and our incubator startups because chitkara has around 8 to 10 agri tech startups and a uh, few of them have done very well you know we recently won in china around 200000 yuan and we have a company there you know a startup which has made a machine to you know uh, uh, check out the weeds from the farms through you know cell necrosis process and all and a very beautiful machine that they have done the second one they've done a startup called bugol which is incubated at chitkara university under our incubator now what does bugol do it predetermines the weather for small farms you know that okay what is the weather going to be and that can help a farmer to produce or plan accordingly so a lot of things are happening there uh, but yes uh, the industry definitely needs to open up a little bit that's one takeaway we take up from this discussion arun ji your thoughts and then i'll request prateep please aapke kya khayal hai unmute kijiye ha ji unmute kijiye ha ji uh thank you sumir ji ha ji uh, my opinion the biggest uh, problem of the world is to finding the solution right so uh, it, it it is only the, uh, not only the uh, we can say that uh, ye sirf uh, is baat se uh, is baat ka matlab nahi ki humne farmer ko hi uplift karna hai but there is another thing is that what we are eating uh, what we are what the uh, uh, things we, जो कि हमारे प्लेट पे हमारे सामने जो आज चीज आ रही है वट वी आर ईटिंग राइट नो सो दैट इज ऑल्सो इन मैटर राइट नो कि मार्केट में सिर्फ फार्मर्स को अपलिफ्ट भी करना है उनकी इंडस्ट्रीज को भी अपलिफ्ट करना जरूरी है साथ ही साथ जो चीज प्रोड्यूस हो रही है उसकी क्वालिटी को भी अपलिफ्ट करना है सो साइमिल दीज टू थिंग्स आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट 
so in my point of view uh, uh, that is the only reason i choose uh, hydroponic because uh, uh, when we produce something in hydroponic the quality value of the uh, product quality value of the plants and the nutritious value is very high as compared to soil farming and there is a one time investment and then the recurring cost is also less yeah. yes yes sir definitely uh, right sir right so uh, in uh, one thing i would uh, i would like to say that when we growing something in the soil so agar hum ise baat kare to soil mein humne koi cheez agar उगा रहे हैं तो सबसे पहले जो प्लांट्स है वो क्या करेगा अपनी रूट्स को बढ़ाता है फॉर वट टू गेट प्रॉपर डाइट राइट सो जो प्लांट uh, है वो जो डाइट लेता है वो इन ऑर्गेनिक फॉर्म में लेता है सो मैं सो इसमें मैं आई विल जस्ट कॉमेंट सर आई अंडरस्टैंड सॉरी टू कट इन बट यू आर फोकसिंग दैट की एक तो प्रोड्यूस अच्छी हो उसकी जो स्टार्ट है वो अच्छी हो सो दैट इट इज मोर हाइजीनिक मोर मोर न्यूट्रिशियस Yeah. and then the journey to the market and right. you know which includes scale uh, so you know customers and all right, right. Uh, perfectly all right pratip would you like to comment on this what we are discussing and then i ask dr rajiv <coughs> right um i guess i'll uh, just reiterate a bit of what gorov said uh, yeah. about beta's not uh, uh, defining the they are offering clusters and all yeah uh, huh. yeah and uh, i'll tell you a very uh, unique entrepreneur problem uh, who has been part of incubators in the past so please um, see what happens is um, each and every company when they go for apply for this incubators uh, they have uh, uh, they are in different stages the incubators many of them uh, they fail to differentiate between a company that is doing let's say uh, 10 lakhs business per month and 1 crore business per month i'm i'm just giving like uh, it may seem very small uh, if that incubator is let's say funded by a big organization etc but there is a huge difference in the kind of uh, uh from a startup perspective where these two companies stand which means right. that uh there is no there is no customized kind of uh, uh nurturing uh that can take place because it's very goal driven uh okay the five in five startups came how much uh, funding are they able to raise how much connects we are getting right so uh i i personally feel that uh, uh number one the this this kind of uh, slight customization uh, should be there to improve the quality uh, of the of the companies that are coming in and going out number 2 is the fixation with founders honestly uh, the companies are only started by founders it is built by so many other people and uh, because uh, most incubators insist that uh, the founders be part of uh, each and every uh, element of the pro- of the program uh, many a times the learning that the founders have are not uh, uh translating to the next level uh which is the one running the company uh you know in this scale up phase so uh that is another uh, gap <laughs> which which uh, which which happens this is going beyond the funding issues of incubators and uh, corporate uh, you know i didn't the corporates not coming into fund for example we recently funded an stpi uh, incubator uh, for an agriculture Uh, and it was funny to see that as a we are ourselves a startup we were the only private sector uh, partner for the first four months uh, despite so many big uh, uh, agri companies uh, in india so you know it's it's a combination of very so nice. many different things <laughs> no i think that's very commendable but, and you know you have really addressed the operational challenge uh, in terms of uh, you know the business scale and all but also when i said ki arun ji ne jo bola ki uh, the is setting to the uh, you know uh, Uh, i would say staying to the topic the smart agriculture uh, hydroponics is one example of smart agriculture right uh, what are the other uh, you know uh, examples of smart agriculture rajiv ji comes to your mind and you must be going through a lot of uh, you know decks yeah, yeah. and all uh, plans yeah. coming to you for funding yeah sumir so uh, uh, actually uh, sustainability is the biggest challenge before us absolutely and uh, the sustainability is uh, in the form of uh, soil health water and even our health that's also part of sustainability right. so as uh, arun was very rightly pointing out that what we eat is equally important yes. and uh, and how we sustain our resources for our future generation that is also very important right so in that direction precision farming is very important 
you have to optimally use the resources whether it is fertilizer whether it is some kind of pesticide or insecticide or soil even soil for that matter uh, so uh, precision farming is the way forward where we use uh, all the technology very optimally and there we need the help of technology and technologist so startup can uh, play a big role in that and uh, they are already uh, you know they are already active in the space so only thing we need to uh, as you rightly indicated that uh, all uh, start uh, this incubation center etc are working in silos each one is addressing their very limited uh, problems right if, if we have a coordinated network of incubation centers and we can share resources share problems with each other and in a very systematic and uh, on a technology platform uh, that can definitely help us in taking forward the precision farm i think both the points are amazing one take away from this another take away from this conversation could be that the precision farming is the way forward that is clear and then also optimum utilization of resources because the management of the soil as arunji pointed out and the future outcome of the health which we are the generation we are living in is something very critical and very connected now the thing is that i think the smart agriculture example would be one is way forward is precision farming and second is that you know optimum 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 utilization of resources now arun ji you were mentioning about the outcome what we are eating and all that excited you to you know come up with this uh, uh, you know option of hydroponics and all how much investment did you made when you set up this business audio please audio so uh, we have two uh, numbers of hydroponic plants in punjab one of them is in moga and uh, the second one is uh, in mohali uh, the jo uh, mohali mein hamara setup hai it is uh, near about 6 acre ka setup hai so uh, we invest there uh, approximately 11 crore rupees and uh, we are uh, uh, investing more uh, more than 100 crores there uh, अभी अब अपने इसको और ज्यादा हम आगे बढ़ा रहे हैं सो वट वी हैड इस्टेब्लिश प्राइट प्रो वी आर इनहसिंग इट एट टेन टाइम मोर देन वट वी है समीर जी सिर्फ उसको प्लांट्स को उगाना है तक ही मतलब कि सीमित नहीं रहती चीज़ें कि हमने हाइड्रोपोटिक में प्रोडक्ट्स या प्लांट्स को अच्छी चीज़ें उगा तो ली हैं लेकिन मोस्ट ऑफ द थिंग्स व्हाट व्हाट आई सा दैट कि जब हम किसी भी मेडिसिनल हर्ब या किसी भी प्लांट की हम प्रोडक्शन करते हैं वो तो हो जाती है जब हम उसकी प्रोडक्शन करने के बाद उसकी प्रोसेसिंग करते हैं तो प्रोसेसिंग के वक्त उसकी जो न्यूट्रिशियस वैल्यू है हम लॉस कर देते हैं कहीं ना कहीं ये एक बहुत बड़ी प्रॉब्लम है जो हमारे सामने देखने में आई है फॉर दैट से हमारे पास वी हैव अ गुड टीम ऑफ साइंटिस्ट एंड डॉक्टर्स जिन्होंने पिछले दस साल से हमारे साथ कंधे से कंधे मिलाकर काम किया और हर चीज़ के बारे में बहुत ज़्यादा इस आफ्टर प्रोसेसिंग मतलब आफ्टर प्रोडक्शन उसकी प्रोसेसिंग किस तरीके से की जाए उसके ऊपर ध्यान दिया गया ताकि उसकी तो आई थिंक बेस्ड ऑन योर कमेंट एन अपॉर्चुनिटी फॉर व्यूअर्स लिसनर्स एंड यंग ऑन्टरप्रनर स्टूडेंट्स इज दैट हाउ दे कैन बिल्ड सोल्यूशन इन प्रोसेसिंग ऑफ द प्रोड्यूस दैट्स अनादर टेक अवे विच कम्स आउट फ्रॉम द सेशन one one more thing is that sir ki uh, after that when we pr- produce something and process something and manufacture something the biggest problem is that market how yes. we market it so mujhe is baat ko kehne mein bahut garv feel ho raha hai ki what we are producing right now hamari uh, already market bahut achhi hai quality zyada achhi hone ki wajah se humne ek marketing company alag se because we have uh, channelized it very in a proper way तो इन दैट केस हमारा जो मार्केटिंग भी इसकी बहुत बढ़िया तरीके से हो रही है इसी कारण हमारा अभी हिमाचल गवर्नमेंट के साथ 500 करोड़ रुपीज का एग्रीमेंट एम जो है फाइनल होने वाला है एक दो दिनों में सो दैट इज ये ये देखो ये ऐसे है जो मर्जी है चाहे छोटा बिजनेस है या बड़ा चाहे एग्री टेक है या नॉन एग्री या जो भी बिजनेस है क्वालिटी विल ऑलवेज रिमेन अ बेंच मार्क quality will always remain a point you know anybody would you will have a buyer now let me go on to the take the conversation to the retail part a lot of retail e-commerce you know agri stuff produce veggies perishable product hai uh, medicine and medicines jo ban rahi hai you know ko kitni variety there is a huge range e-commerce ke upar 
जो इतनी फंडिंग स्टार्टअप्स को मिलती है और इतना यू नो चल रहा है बिजनेस क्या उसमें 100 परसेंट ऑथेंटिसिटी रहती है यू नो हाउ डू यू वांट शेयर अबाउट वुड यू लाइक व्हाट वुड यू कमेंट ऑन द ई कॉमर्स पार्ट बाइंग फ्रॉम अ मंडी और अ शॉप और अ वेंडर एट होम रादर देन गोइंग एंड बाइंग ऑनलाइन आई अंडरस्टैंड अ लॉट ऑफ गुड इनिशियट ऑफ पंजाब गवर्नमेंट इज ऑल्सो uh being done on the retail part uh, they have a beautiful website uh, an app also where you can you know order a very good amount of uh, veggies good quality i would say uh, but what are your take on e-commerce for agri you know you know is it the only solution to find a market or there is another solution to find a market uh, maybe gaurav would you like to add and then rajiv sir can add look if you want to have a personal view i would say there are better ways another other better ways to yeah i would like to know than, that yeah <laughs> <laughs> because there are some things which it is better that we go out and buy yeah i cannot tell you what is the alternate solution but yeah we can we shall explore more there are certain items you know when it comes to perishable items uh i really uh, i i cannot say whether e-commerce uh, the, the 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 point you mentioned about their authenticity remains same or uh, get compromise i mean that that's still a question uh, right uh, but yeah i i would like to listen from those Let, who are working let's, in let's this let's talk field. about alternative market options marketable options that maybe prateep would you like to comment and then i go to uh, the senior mr rajiv and uh, you know his have his expert comments what are the alternative markets apart from e-commerce and that also for agri product which has a shelf life and it is a question of our health <laughs> true well uh, i guess that's a tough one for me uh, considering again um, i come from a tech space so um, you know models which are uh, more like a hybrid model uh, those are quite interesting i'll tell you an example not from the vegetables from the meat industry so you we know fresh to home and we know uh, this company licious right so uh, they are owning uh, uh, they are having a delivery only model but there is another third company called tender cuts um which is a very interesting company where you uh, have both the offline and the online model uh, and uh, as someone who has meat i think that's very interesting uh, uh, proposition because uh, while we like the convenience of the e-commerce model there are uh, uh, certain specific ways in which we want the fish to be cut or you know uh, chicken to be made because of the kind of gravy we are or or kind of recipe we are preparing so uh, i am sure that uh, moving forward in all of these uh, e-commerce versus uh, brick and mortar uh, uh, debate we will see uh, a digital model uh, becoming more and more uh, common because it it caters to both the convenience as well as the quality and the experience perspective you know the personal experience which all of us want uh, and uh, uh, i i guess uh, i'll be more uh, happy to hear uh, from from our other sure fans. sure i think like, no no well, 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 well you did you did your best to bring out your thoughts but let us ask rajiv ji also what are the alternative ways for a farmer to market their produce as arun ji sees that as a oh. challenge he is lucky what about those who struggle to make it to market yeah samir uh, actually when we talk of digital uh, platforms through which we purchase various eatables uh, that these are basically uh, aggregators they right. buy from farmer and uh, they process in certain way market it uh, through a digital platform right. but when it comes to farmers uh, uh, we have a system of uh, msp which is very popular in uh, punjab and uh, fci is the biggest aggregator for that matter for particular right. for wheat and rice and then we have a cooperative sector working in dairy amul is a very successful model and based on that amul model there are a lot of private invest investors who come in dairy sectors and they have become aggregator right uh, mother dairy tried to market uh, uh, their marketing milk very well but they tried through uh, this vegetable also hmm. so i mean e-commerce uh, maybe there i mean home delivery is a very convenient thing particularly after covid 
but when it comes to uh, marketing awareness for the farmers it has to be a mix and match of many platforms it can be not limited to one particular kind of platform. right so you can you do you think sir that you know more uh, coming to you uh, gaurav do, do you think sir that more mandis or more outlets of uh, you know government giving more space for uh, you know uh, opportunities for a customer to go and buy veggies so that they enjoy the fresh produce there are the more clusters and more uh, you know processing units and all these things need to ramp up a little bit more access to fresh produce is also a challenge so do you think the the population we have and the 2 or 3% population which is techy and order online and all due to their fast paced life you know but do you think uh, there could be more opportunities of infrastructure set up a little big, yeah. bigger samir samir may, uh, may i come in here um, yes when you talk of fresh vegetable or perishable that include your fruits meat eggs and all these things dairy items we need a very strong cold chain right uh, farm gate to consumer uh, right thing. so cold chain uh, is very important the logistic and value chain uh, financing uh, uh, in a very systematic man- uh, manner uh, right. can help in solving the problem of perishable so i think uh, absolutely uh, the infrastructure remains uh, a critical still a critical challenge uh, that's another take away from this conversation uh, please uh, gaurav uh, you have been waiting to give a comment on this i wanted to introduce two of the known scenarios uh, one uh, i mean they uh, both relate to the marketing part but uh, in two different uh, geographical regions uh, so one is a couple of my friends they are running uh, i mean they are uh, doing this organic farmer somewhere in solan and every week they coordinate among themselves or the similar uh, farmers and they uh, come to chandigarh with their produce and they set up an organic mandi there they finish off and go, go back home empty vehicles and fill their pockets so this is one scenario where uh, you know you have a good connectivity right for example, if i take the case of uh, the place where i am presently in himachal uh, where the connectivity is not so good and and you know when we talk about uh, fruits like uh, apple or we talk about uh, dry fruits like walnut uh, these are being harvested in small pockets at different altitudes so in himachal there are couple of organization which are working in this line they acting as a common facility center or common support center to the, the these scattered group of farmers so they take their produce they pack it up they you know uh, add value to it through packaging or through different marketing channels they open so in a way they have helped farmers to take their produce from far flung villages to uh, a district level market and from the district level market through this common infrastructure they are also uh you know using some part of the e-commerce they are also exporting this stuff right so i so, think uh, i think your point is operative very model also fits in like uh, rajiv ji mentioned when he cited amul an example as an example there is yes. a good role uh, of ngos who can you know uh, become farmer farmer producer organizations and ensure backward forward linkages so uh, these are the potential market uh, you know channels which no, can still be explored that that supply chain system the the chain system which mentioned by rajiv ji and and uh, the uh, do you know the aggregation part which he mentioned like big aggregators like big basket on e retail and all e commerce they're selling it and there are a young startup which i know we started a month back called fresh cart you know from panchkula so what they are doing is they are you know aggregating the best produce packaging it and then selling it you know and they are making now baskets of let's say 1100 bucks and all which bucks okay it's a mixed bunch of uh, they would through their artificial intelligence thought process they would say okay the person for next 3 days would need this you know this is their pattern of eating and consuming so a lot of innovation is happening there but yes they also struggle to find customers oh, and yes, make Sam- it happen samir in a way that uh, decision making is also also being outsourced now Yes, oh, when that's you go what. to <laughs> data data analytics. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, uh, Arun ji aap kuch kehna cha rahe the is pe because you are really at the helm of affairs aap to bilkul on ground kaam kar rahe hain is pe. Uh sir uh, Sameer ji uh, as sirf apna experience hi share kar sakta hu aapke liye. Please ka. please. Ha ji. Uh as per my experience uh, when we saw market 
तो हमने इसको हर तरीके से कैप्चर करने की कोशिश की है जिसमें हमने ई कॉमर्स का भी सहारा लिया है फ्रेंचाइजी हमने डेवलप किया है और साथ के साथ हमने डायरेक्ट सेलिंग का सहारा भी लिया है ओके वी आर आल्सो एक्सपोर्टिंग आवर मैन्युफैक्चर्ड प्रोडक्ट टू द मेनी कंट्रीज राइट नाउ सो एज पर माय कंसर्न कि जिस भी मार्केट के जो भी जरिए हैं जो भी तरीके हैं वे हैं हमें सबको uh, अपनाना चाहिए और uh, अपना के उस पर अगर रिजल्ट डेफिनेटली अगर अच्छे तरीके से प्रेजेंटेबल होगी हमारी चीज़ तो डेफिनेटली उसका रिजल्ट आएगा तो मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट चीज़ यही है कि मार्केट को स्टडी करके उसका अपनी चीज़ को प्रेजेंटेबल बनाना है और मार्केट uh, जो है uh, आपके पास खड़ी है लेने के लिए क्योंकि उसकी ज़रूरत है बट कनेक्टिविटी की कहीं ना कहीं प्रॉब्लम है कि वायर जो है वो सेलर तक या सेलर वायर तक कनेक्ट नहीं हो पा रहा है तो इस लिंक को हमें ख़त्म करना है और uh, the 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 are ready to buy but the, they also think that ki wo cheez wo jo le hai, wo presentable ho, aur, uh, at present uh, agar jo cheez main dekh raha hu, uh, log kharch karne ke liye, ja, kharchne ke liye liye nahi hai. Uh, par cheez unhe achhi chahiye. if you are uh, giving something good to them then they are uh, buying और एक चीज मैंने और भी देखी है कि मैक्सिमम लोग ये चीज नहीं देखते हैं कि यार आप कौन सी चीज महंगी है कौन सी सस्ती है आज के टाइम में ये चीज देखते हैं कि कौन सी चीज अच्छी है फिर कंपेटिव तो उसके साथ कंपैरिजन करते हैं जो एक हाई क्वालिटी के साथ एब्सोल्युटली एंड यू नो इन्फ्लुएंशियल मार्केट इन्फ्लुएंसर्स बहुत हैं यू नो सो ओके चार दिन आपने सोचा कि ये उसने बोल दिया डॉक्टर ने उसने बोल दिया तो अब इधर चल पड़ो सो वन हैज टू स्टिक टू द कन्वेक्शन एंड अ पैटर्न बट मैं एक क्वेश्चन पूछना चाहता हूँ एक चीज पे कस्टमर हेल्पलेस रहता है वो है प्राइस यू नो द फ्लक्चुएशन इन प्राइस क्वालिटी ओके दैट्स फाइन बट हाउ डज यू नो वन यू नो हैव सम सॉर्ट ऑफ कंफर्ट जोन फॉर अ कस्टमर हु हैज सम सॉर्ट ऑफ पावर टू कंट्रोल द प्राइस ऑल्सो इसके लिए मैं राजीव जी से कुछ पूछना चाहता हूँ कि सर यू आर you know helm of affairs with the government on the subject the pl- price fr- fluctuation is seasonal and then at the end of the day the customer has to fo- feed himself because zindagi ki sabse gehri hamari jo habit hai wo khana hai you know so yes. one has to go ahead with it ki thi nahi yaar lena hai yes but we we yes. somewhere suffer you know on the the offer which the you know seller is giving and we say okay now we have to buy it yes Samir ji, this particular issue of price fluctuation is more in certain commodities like uh, onion, tomato, and uh, few other crops. So government has tried to address it uh, through a program, uh, which I don't remember exactly now, where uh, they have devised a method wherever there is a surplus production and prices are falling. See, you generally see on television that farmers are throwing their tomato on the road. Right. And after one month, the same tomato uh, you buy at fifty rupees a kg or hundred rupees a kg. So I mean, uh, there there is a system where these commodities are supported in terms of transport facilities. Certain aggregators are authorized for that, and uh, they uh, you know take out the market from surplus area. They take out the commodity from surplus area and uh, send it to deficit areas. Right. So that one initiative government has taken. but ultimately it has to be you know the solution will come from uh, supply chain only in the long term so, solution supply chain supply chain yeah. i think uh, you know uh, well the conversation is now getting very deeper but uh, we always have the time issue but what i would like to sum up uh, you know here is that uh, young entrepreneurs who are listening to this conversation and i'm sure they should uh, go a little step forward to reach out to the stalwarts on the panel here Uh, in person and try and have a better uh, you know time of theirs sit down discuss and maybe they get mentorship from you know arun ji who's who's done it so well you know in a very bootstrap way he brought the company is talking about 100 crores of rupees of investment in a 6 acre farm and trying to bring a very infusion of technology and uh, on the policy gaurav has been giving his thoughts and uh, what one take away a young entrepreneurs can find an opportunity is do some validation right do some problem identification supply chain mein bahut scope hai infrastructure mein scope hai food ki supply and pipeline banane mein uh, till consumption there is a lot of scope for entrepreneurs 
districts and towns where there is bad road accessibility and the produce doesn't reach on time and there is not a culture of agriculture in a particular district there is a scope for entrepreneurs how they can make the food reach faster in those districts right uh, so lot of scope is coming up if in we have another 4 5 minutes where if anybody wants to address some another comment which can help the young entrepreneurs to find their livelihood by making that company gora please add uh thanks mr walia uh i would like to deviate a bit from what you just mentioned or you asked for uh since we um, discussed about a challenge which is uh, which relates to finance or funding i want to uh, through this uh, platform i want to inform uh, the students or the entrepreneurs or large or small as well as sure. the startups that we uh, as giz is implementing uh, an instrument called develop ppp wherein a big entrepreneur uh, there there are certain terms and conditions or the eligibility criteria i mentioned on the website wherein entrepreneur can come with a startup they can become a bi party or they enter into a bi party agreement and then they formalize a project concept submitted to giz so there is a 50 more than 50% funding opportunity from uh, giz from the federal government of germany provided that uh, the minimum contribution from uh, The, the entrepreneur private is, side yeah around a million euros right so that is an opportunity where large entrepreneurs can you know utilize it to uh, support or to raise uh, a small a budding startup yeah right. yeah no i think we can talk about it uh, of uh, of the program uh, you know and we would also love to host you we we discuss and i personally while doing this discussion i felt that i want to meet everybody in person we need to go out and uh, you know have a cup of tea and discuss further how we can do more for young entrepreneurs and though the central government and governments are doing trust me uh, in himachal uh, you know around 9 nine of our startups nine of chitkara incubator startups from the state of entire himachal are enjoying the cm uh, you know sustainable sustainable allowance of 3 lakh rupees per year which is like they utilize that money uh, the government is giving support to the incubation centers they, it's very different now they are saying take the money give us a good funnel of ideas you know so ministry of electronics so well giving 7 lakh rupees to any innovator who who's, de- who's making a hardware device whether for aerial mapping of agri farms or security whatever you know maybe a product for agri, agri better agriculture or a e tractor or a better battery for a e tractor whatever so a lot of things are in place i think uh, earlier comments jo hamare humne dekhe hain usme we felt that you know there needs to be a, a larger connectivity between incubation centers that right. comment uh, gorav said and backed by pratik also uh, you know the kind of fluctuation which keeps on happening in terms of uh, even the structural funding you know and more awareness from you know from policies and offerings from nabard uh, because trust me nabard I, i personally admire how they are doing this great work and uh, even in ikri sat when i was there for 3 days there was a discussion about nabard with the, with the ceo of uh, tiha uh, they were yes me. so it is very interesting to see that we are all coming together and talking about it though we can't justify in just a 50 minutes of a session but definitely it will give impetus and a thought process to the youngsters that yes you know uh, we have an opportunity so i hope we could do some justice to this conversation for our audience uh, we all mean well but uh, it is a personal thanks for from the tai team uh, a great tai team the president hridesh madan and the entire board to we thank you all for joining us today and making the session i hope worthwhile i learned from it i i'm sure others would, would have also done so thank you mr rajiv and thank you gaurav ji arun ji aapko zarur milna hai mujhe and because chitkara has a hydroponics plant they set up way back 7 6 7 8 years back in himachal baddi campus so aapko zarur milna hai humne and thank sure, you sure sure you're most welcome and thanks to tai and particularly hardesh madan uh, yes uh, thank you again thank you very much thank sir, you very i would much. like to yes. i would like to say something here uh, i just want to add that the audience looks hooked so since it is the last session of the whole season uh, you're welcome to continue this conversation for few more minutes if i found the audience leaving then i can just let you know 
Yeah, sure. I think uh, we would uh, respect the time, but I can always have a welcome, uh, some comments if Pratip wants to add or anybody. I, uh, I have one question from Arun. Uh, BK Banker, I'm curious to know whether he was quoted by banks or he was on his own. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Milinda Devi says, that's brilliant. That's <laughs> brilliant. Yeah. But uh, I think uh, the Thai uh, team, uh, tech team, we would like to uh, wrap up. And uh, we're pretty happy with our, with our conversation. It has a very smooth landing, I believe. And over to Niharika now. Well, sir, you're quite right. The flight took off very smoothly and landed quite safe and sound. Thank Tough you. Job. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all right. You know, as entrepreneurs, we're all used to tough jobs and uh, that's a part of our daily life. You know what they no, say? Well, you know, when, when there are invites or sessions uh, like these or in, in the university or anywhere in the country or abroad, and they say, we'd like to invite you. Then I say, okay, am I a speaker or a moderator? <laughs> you know, so that, that's something very interesting. I oh, they, No, no, sir, you are moderating the session. <laughs> then, then it's become very more interesting as a, because sometimes you don't know the people and then you have to bring everybody to a comfort level. And uh, But anyway, uh, thanks for this great opportunity. Over to you. No, sir, I can totally understand your sentiments because uh, I'm in your position quite often and I know what it feels like to be on the backstage and to have to interact no, with people. No not met before. Happy, happy to serve. Happy to serve. <laughs> right, right. So uh, I must uh, take this opportunity uh, to thank all our esteemed panelists first. Ladies and gentlemen, we were in conversation with Mr. Rajiv Sivach, Chief General Manager, Nabad, Punjab. Uh, Mr. Pratip Basu, Co-Founder and CEO of Satshore. Uh, Mr. Arun Naryal, Director of Hydro Crops, and uh, Mr. Gaurav Sharma, technical expert from GIZ. And of course, uh, the pilot of the flight was uh, our moderator, Mr. Sumit Malia, <laughs> Director of the Incubation Center at Chitkara University. And uh, even more so, you know, because now uh, I see organic farming and uh, gardening at home getting such a big push. So, you know, it's just about connecting the dots and it's just about a matter of time where we uh, connect with our roots again and we take agri-tech to new heights. And on that note, ladies and gentlemen, it is finally, finally a wrap on this edition of Taikon Chandigarh 2021. We are grateful to you. We are uh, very heartwarmed by your response. And uh, we are grateful to you for joining us for these entire uh, three days. Yes, it was a three-day extravaganza. Wouldn't have been possible without your support and wouldn't have been possible without the support of all our sponsors and partners as well. So I must take this opportunity to thank them once more in no particular order. I would like to mention our partner, ISB, and also the contribution of our platinum partner, Government of Punjab and Startup Punjab, our bronze partners, Hit Bullseye, Chitkara University, and Nabad, and our silver partners, STPI and Pioneer, and lastly, our gold partners, GIC India and Punjab Technical University. Jate jate, aapse bas ek baat kehna chahungi. Pichla saal ham sab ke liye hi bahut alag raha hai. Lekin agar kuch sikha hai, to wo ye hai. Zindagi samhalne ko zindagi padi hai. Puri zindagi samhalne ko humare paas zindagi padi hai. Bas wo lamha samhal lete hai, jahan par humare zindagi aaj khadi hai. It's really about the little, little things. And uh, this is me, Neharika, official anchor and MC for Thai uh, Chandigarh 2021, uh, signing off now. We'll see you next year. Humhe rahi pyaar ke, fir milenge chalte chalte. Shukriya, namaskar, aur shubhratri. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.